Hello everybody, this is Cap of Codeclism, and I would like to welcome you to the seventh video in my beginner C++ tutorial series. So in this video I'm going to talk about C style strings, <clears throat> and in the next video I'm going to talk about C++ style strings. So I'm going to show you two different ways to declare C style strings here. Uh, the first I'm going to show you is the more tedious way, which is of course making a char array, call it thing, brace here, and doing this, you add in each individual character. And a very important thing to remember about C style strings is, is that they are null terminated. Which means that if you declare them this way, you are going to have to add in your null terminator. So if we come down here and just print this out. As you can see, we have our string. You can't really tell it this way, but the null terminator is there. If we were to print this out vertically, as I'll show you, you can see the little gap there that is our null terminator. So the second way to declare C style strings is to just put your string in between double quotes. getting ahead of myself there. Oh my god. Okay. So save it and run it. As you can see we get the same result. So you probably noticed that using this method of you know, declaring and instantiating it we don't have to add in the null terminator, it does that for us. But it is still there. If we were to print this out vertically like we did the last one, we would still have that little gap there. So, C style strings are treated more like built-in data types. And C++ style strings are treated as objects because they're objects. So, it is a lot more difficult to work with C style strings. Like for instance, you can't just say thing dot concat, <coughs> concat like you can with uh, C++ style strings and you also can't say like thing plus equal another string to just concatenate them together. You have to use other methods specifically made for uh, C style strings. So say we wanted to concatenate something onto thing. Well the first thing we'd have to do is make sure there's enough room. So we're just going to add a little 30 here so that we know that there's enough room to concatenate you know probably whatever we'd want to. And we would use str cat dash s or underscore s sorry and we would want our destination to be thing and our source to be whatever we wanted, wanted to concatenate onto it in this case I'll just say something and then we'll come down here and print out thing So 
So as you can see, it did concatenate something onto the end of thing. Most of you will have probably noticed that there is an str cat, but I would highly advise using str cat underscore s because it is safer and more current. Uh, most IDEs will probably have deprecated str cat and will throw an error and you can still use it if you want to by disabling you know all the warnings and errors and whatnot but it would probably just be easier and safer to just go ahead and use str cat underscore s so say we wanted to copy our uh, string into another string so what we would have to do here is we don't really need that anymore is declare another uh, empty character array and we'll just call it thing 2 and we'll make it 30 characters long once again you have to make sure that there's enough space to copy into it so we'll use str cpy and again underscore s and we will say thing2 is our destination and thing is our sort oh, our source and if we just come down here and print out thing2 save it run as you can see it successfully copied from thing into thing 2 so as you guys can see it's kind of a a bit of a hassle working with C style strings but with some of the older libraries since you know C++ is backwards compatible with C you can still use those older libraries and some of them do only take C style strings so it's a really good thing to know and also when working with you know C style strings uh, you get into using buffers quite a bit like when you're reading from files or reading from things coming in from the network like a good example is the Winsock library you use a lot of uh, char buffers when using the Winsock library so it's a very very good thing to know if you're going to be working with older libraries and you probably will be because a lot of the older libraries are very good and they're still usable uh, so that's probably about as in-depth as I'm going to go into C style strings at this time uh, I may make another intermediate series where I go more in-depth but uh, as beginners that's that's about all you really need to know about C style strings and their manipulation um, like I said the next video is going to be about C++ style strings and manipulating them and it will probably be quite a bit longer because you will be using C++ style strings a lot more and you can do a lot more with them uh, so once again I would like to thank you for watching and if you like this video hit like and subscribe you can also follow us on twitter at we are codeclism and uh, once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video